And then when you have a newborn, you know, and especially as a woman, I'd like to remind you all that she called Catherine out for having, quote, baby brain. This is the woman saying it's hard when you have a newborn. She called Catherine baby brain because Catherine, according to that, forgot some detail about the upcoming wedding or something. And she called her baby brain. So that's totally fine in their world. But again, everything's hard for Megan. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here. You guys, we have a fun one today. Daily Mail is laying into these two. And I'm here for it. We have a new member of the Drunk Goose Club. It's Amanda Platel, the author of this article. We're going to talk about all of it. Hey, a huge thank you to you all. Thank you for writing such lovely things in my comments. So many of you are feeling just as fired up about all of this as I am. You know, if you know me at all, you know that I just feel this strong urge to stand up for the royal family. I think it's awful what these two have put them through. Of course, as well as her family as well. And, um... I just, I feel this, I just feel like this calling to, to talk about this because it's so wrong what they, what they've been doing, what they continue to do. And so many of you are feeling the same frustration as me and, and then seeing the bigger picture that they're trying to silence us from talking about them. It really is, I mean, it's bonkers to quote Harry, right? He thinks our first amendment's bonkers. I think they're bonkers and I'm going to keep talking about it. So thank you all for being here. Now let's take a look at this article. I'm Jen, by the way, Hong Kong. All right, let's talk this. Amanda Platel, a new member of the club, right? Why I don't buy self-appointed victim, Megan's quote, compassion. Dun, dun, dun. I'm so glad they're calling her out. I'm no body language person. I leave that to the pros like Dylan, but my goodness, have you ever seen anybody so gleeful to be talking about such tragedy and such awful things, but to be making about herself? uh, Again, I do get comments. I'm not leaving Harry out of this. He is a willing participant. He's sitting right there next to her. He's just as disgusting as she is. All right, we're diving right into the meat of this article because the first couple paragraphs, of course, are like, if anybody's ever been in a situation where you're thinking of taking yourself out, that's truly terrible. Wouldn't wish that on anybody. But here we go. But how brazen of Megan to use this interview as an opportunity to promote herself as the compassionate duchess. When she has, on other occasions, shown so little respect or empathy to others, like most self-appointed victims, I like that, self-appointed victim, Megan is often seeking to blame others. The dream she had of life beyond luxury and wealth as a duchess, she believes was undone by the queen, supported by her seriously ill husband, Prince Philip, Prince William, and his father, King Charles. She and Harry believed they had no choice but to betray the queen and King Charles. Um, well, now King Charles, William and Catherine in their bitter, bitter Oprah interview, Netflix documentary, and Harry's unforgivable memoir spare. Uh, and that's putting it nicely. What about her podcasts and all the articles and all the, you know, we want privacy, but putting it all out there. Yeah, we know it all. But let's start with that private dossier investigating reported accusations of systematic bullying toward her staff. I know if you missed... Um, I don't know when this is going up. I put up a video just recently where I show clips from that Valentine Lowe interview. Definitely go check that out. Um, the thumbnail is the one where she's covering Harry's mouth. But uh, let's see here. Toward her staff when she was a working royal, vehemently, vehemently denied by Megan, which the firm loyally buried before it could appear. I'd love to hear what those staff members who made allegations had to say about Megan's compassion. Exactly this. I said at the time, I say again, if there was nothing to hide, why wouldn't they let that thing out? And I know, I I totally know. I I always get the comments, you don't want to further traumatize the victims. I get it. Let's redact their names. Let's change some characteristics. Let's Let's call them, I don't know, anything. Let's call them cartoon names, whatever it is. Let's let's change it all. Let's change some details and let's share it. I think it's time. And then there's her disrespect for the Windsors, who welcomed her in before she slandered them. Not just as being cruel and unsupportive to her mental health struggles, but branding some of them as the Istwards, telling Oprah that members of the royal family had expressed concerns and conversations, you know, about the baby skin color. In dropping this bombshells in such a cryptic fashion, Megan surely knew 
she was cruelly firing the starting gun for a royal witch hunt. She knew what she was doing, and Harry sat right next to her. Been over this a million times, but I will continue to beat this drum. I don't understand how anybody could still support them, even after that interview. Even if you supported them up until that interview, when you watch it, they contradict themselves even on this story about the details of what supposedly happened. So I don't understand. It's that whole thing when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. They're showing us over and over they cannot tell the truth about anything. Then, before Catherine revealed her devastating diagnosis, Megan's mouthpiece, quote, royal correspondent Omid Scobie, how's that working out for him? Because his books are flopping, uh, who collaborated with them on his first book about them, Finding Freedom, accidentally revealed the alleged ist words to, to be King Charles and Catherine via the Dutch language version of the book. The constant attacks from Montecito and the couple's supporters cannot have been good for the Princess of Wales' health in recent years. Exactly this. Lest us not forget, this is one of many times we can directly show the targeting of especially Catherine. Yes, they went after Charles too, but I'm sorry. It's just over and over toward Catherine because Meghan can't stand that Catherine is better in every single way. She just is. Like, she's just a better person. We don't see her targeting the family. We don't, we always see Catherine literally supporting. We don't see that with Megan. She's awful and she can't stand it. And she'll never have the admiration that Catherine naturally has and has earned uh, because she puts in the work. (laughs) Megan will never have that. So instead of Falling in line, she is trying to take down Catherine. It is disgusting to watch. Let's not forget Megan's continued estrangement from her frail father, Thomas. Oh, we won't. I will continue to mention that as well. Who's paid for her private education and cared for her years, uh, for years during her childhood. She has turned her back on him, denying him the right to meet not only her husband, but his grandchildren. I'm sure Thomas wouldn't describe his daughter as compassionate. That's exactly what I've been saying too. She pretends to use other people's kids. No, she uses other people's kids to pretend to be maternal. I've shown it in so many videos. We just saw it in some of the South Africa stuff I've been revisiting. And she pretends to be compassionate by using people who've actually been through terrible things and then leeching onto that sort of thing and then making it about herself. Impression of kindness Megan gave during the CBS interview. I'm going to go ahead and respectfully disagree with that. I don't think she came off as kind at all. I think she came off as a leech. Um, <laughs> was worlds away from the often indignant Duchess. I hate to, I don't say her title, so it feels weird saying that. Um, indignant that one portrayed by, sorry, in royal expert Robert Jobson. I don't like that guy, so I don't want to push his new book. Anyway, uh, serialized in the mail recently, he revealed, among other things, that Meghan was taken aback at the display between William and Catherine's lavish apartment in Kensington Palace and their humble two-bedroom not caught. Okay, I I, I could go on and on and on about this. First of all, they are future king and queen, so there's that. Second of all, they put in their time to get that sort of thing. Uh, They lived in not caught for a while as did i believe didn't the queen stay there for a while like th- th- you put in your time as royalty and you you i mean it sounds like they've worked their way up to what they've gotten honestly i don't care if they were handed what they got i don't see them out writing books trashing the family so why wouldn't they get better rewards these two to my harry and megan are just awful what do they 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 deserve nothing, (laughs) nothing. And that's what they've got now, nothing. Continues on to point out that Megan seems to want to be seen as a victim at all times. Remember her tearful interview uh, with Tom Bradby? Oh, I know that one well. I've been covering that. Go back and look at all my videos on South Africa recently. I have a few more coming. Uh, On a trip to Africa in 2019, when she was asked how she was doing, can't just answer, I'm good, how are you? Nobody's asked me about me. (laughs) <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Uh, look, any woman, especially when they're pregnant, you're really vulnerable. And so, let's see, that was made really challenging. Oh my goodness. I'd like to remind everybody, 
as I have been covering this lately, she was steps away from a women's shelter where terrible, terrible things had happened to these women. They've had to endure just the most tragic of circumstances. And she's there saying, nobody's asked me if I'm okay. And then when you have a newborn, you know, and especially as a woman, it's a lot. I don't know what uh, action or impression I'm doing. This is supposed to be Megan. It's a lot. And also, thank you for asking because not many people have asked if I'm okay. I'd like to remind you all that she, um, according to Harry in his book, she called Catherine out for having, quote, baby brain. I'd just like to remind you all of that. This is the woman saying it's hard when you have a newborn. She called Catherine baby brain because Catherine, according to them, I don't believe anything they say, forgot some detail about the upcoming wedding or something. And she called her baby brain. So that's totally fine in their world. But again, everything's hard for Megan. Forgive mothers from around the world for failing to sympathize with the whinges from Megan, who enjoyed success, wealth, privilege beyond most women's imagination. It didn't wash then, and it doesn't wash now. And I think that's the best choice of words ever, because <laughs> if you heard my interview with HG Tutor, he asked me a question, <laughs> you just have to go watch it, uh, about washing and Megan, and yeah, it just all ties together. So yeah doesn't wash then, it doesn't wash now. Then it goes on to say that Americans and Brits alike, I would add more to that. It sounds like Nigerians too, are fed up with the duo. One thing is for sure, King Charles won't be coming to the rescue as People Magazine ugh, re revealed last week, Bank of Dad isn't taking Harry's calls or answering his letters. I'm sure Harry's pulling out his crayons writing, dude, Paul, please help. Uh, just possibly like the rest of us, the king is fed up with the veneer. <laughs> Again, funny choice of words, veneers. Of compassion, which the Sussexes keep forcing on the world. Anyway, that's it for the article. It's they're using it's like compassion is commodity. It's it's truly I mean, I use disgusting so much. I got let's pick another word. It's despicable. They are revolting. They're shameful. Shall I keep going? Um, someone got a thesaurus. <laughs> Guys, uh, this is just crazy. But I'm here to talk about it and I will continue to talk about it because they need to be called out for uh, they're revolting, shameful, obnoxious, disgusting behavior. Shall I keep going? Somebody knows the big words now. <laughs> oh, goodness. You guys are the best. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting. Dying to know your thoughts on all this. Let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you for all the lovely responses lately. Like so many of you are saying you're really enjoying my videos, and I want you to know how much that means to me. Uh, a lot of you say things like, you brighten my day. I want you to know you brighten mine. So thank you for everything. And uh, I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this. I hope you have the best day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.